All right, so today we're going to do a quick review over Pythagorean Theorem. And I know you've seen Pythagorean Theorem a lot before, so I won't spend too much time on it. Uh, but maybe we'll add just a little bit to what you already know. So Pythagorean Theorem, right? An important thing is it only deals with right triangles. So that's a really common error or misconception. Is we try uh, applying uh, Pythagorean Theorems to non-right triangles. Uh, so what it says is if the square of the length of the hypotenuse, the hypotenuse is always the longest side, so it's this side over here, that's the hypotenuse, side C, it's also the side opposite the right angle. Okay, so the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the, the lengths of the legs. So in a right triangle, the legs of the triangle are the two sides that are not the hypotenuse. So those A and B, those two sides are the legs of the triangle, uh, side C is the hypotenuse. So we've seen this before, that A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Again, it only works in right triangles. So just a quick example. Uh, if you look at this, right, it says find the value of X, uh, then tell whether the sides form a Pythagorean triple. We'll talk what a Pythagorean triple is here in just a second. All right, so first thing to check and see that it's a right triangle, which we can see that because we got that right angle right there. Uh, identify the hypotenuse. I would always do that next. So X is the hypotenuse because it's the longest side and it's the side opposite the right angle. Okay, that means 12 and 5 are the legs, so they're A and B. So I'm going to take A squared plus B squared. It doesn't matter what order we go with those because right, it doesn't matter if I go 5 squared plus 12 squared or 12 squared plus 5 squared. That has to equal the hypotenuse squared, which I don't know. So, right, equals x squared. Okay, let's solve this. I got 25 plus, what, 144. You add those together, I think it comes out to be 169. Take the square root of both sides. Now, when we do that, normally we have to do a plus or a minus. Uh, square root of 169, if you plug in a calculator, I think is 13. Now, in this case, because I'm talking about how long that side is, uh, we just we don't have to worry about the negative, right? Because a, a side length can't be negative. So when we take the square root of both sides and we're solving in Pythagorean theorem, I don't have to worry about the minus. All right, so there's our answer, which is 13. That's how long the side is over here. Hey, and then it says, tell whether it forms Pythagorean triple. Pythagorean triples are, are numbers that satisfy the Pythagorean theorem. The a squared plus b squared equals c squared. They are, I should say, they are whole numbers. So no negatives. Okay, no, so they're, they're just uh, whole numbers uh, that satisfy the Pythagorean theorem. So in this case, 5, 12, and 13 are all whole numbers, so we would say yes, these are a Pythagorean triple. All right, let's try this one here. Same thing, find the value of x, and then tell whether the side lengths form a Pythagorean triple. So I would always start out, identify, make sure it's a right triangle, identify the hypotenuse. This side is the hypotenuse, so that has to be c. So we're going to go 7 squared plus the other leg, x squared, has to equal the hypotenuse squared. We're going to plug out, figure out that is, that's 49 plus x squared. I'm going to go 14 squared. That equals 196 minus over the 49. So 196 minus 49 comes out to be a 147. Take the square root. We don't have to worry about the plus or minus because it's the side of a triangle. Now the square root of 147, if you plug it in a calculator, it does not come out evenly. Uh, so it is, let me just grab this here. Square root of 47 is an irrational number. Comes out to be approximately uh, 12.12. And like that just keeps going, right? It's irrational. So you got to make sure you pay attention to directions. If they ask you to, um, if they ask you to give an exact answer, in this case it didn't say. If they ask you to give an exact answer, we're going to leave it as 147 and just break it apart if possible. Um, let me do that. So just to remind you, 147 breaks apart to be 3 and 49, and 49 breaks apart to be 7 and 7. So the 7, I got a pair of 7s, so square root of 7 squared times 3, square root of 7 squared is 7, so that would be the exact answer in simplified form, 7 squares of 3, which is the same thing as, you know, it's approximately 12.12. 12 
So just pay attention to how, you know, how they want the answer, whether they want the exact answer simplified or whether they just want the approximate. Okay, that's Pythagorean theorem. You've done it a lot before. I'm not going to spend a lot of time with that. The new theorem is this, though, is when you are... Come down here. It's called the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. And see if this makes sense. If we know that um, a squared... If we, if we have a triangle and we don't know if it's a right triangle... Okay, so the question mark right here is, is it a right triangle? So we can check if it satisfies, if the lengths of the, the sides, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, if that comes out to be true, right, that proves that it's a right triangle. So remember we talked about converse, it means if and then switches. Okay, so instead of saying if it's a right triangle, then a squared plus b squared equals c squared, what we're saying is, if a squared plus b squared equals c squared, then it's a right triangle. Um, so tell whether they're right triangles. We're just going to do one of these. So I'm going to go, well, this is the longest side, so it's got to be C. So 8 and 7 are A and B. So I'm going to go, do, does 8 squared plus 7 squared equal the square root of 113 squared? So that would be 64 plus 49. And the question is, right, uh, square root of 113 squared is just 113. Are those equal? So if I add uh, 64 plus 49, it comes out to be 113. So they are equal, so we can check this off. Yes, it is a right triangle. Okay. The last thing you need to know from this section from 9.1 is this. Is you can actually tell if it's not a right triangle. You can tell if it's a obtuse or whether it's an acute triangle. So just to remind you of the definitions, an acute triangle, if you want to write, the, you don't have to write this down, but if you don't remember, you can, is all the angles are less than 90 degrees. So all angles less than 90 degrees. If it's obtuse, you have one angle that's greater. One angle is greater than 90 degrees. All right, so what, see if this makes sense. What happens is we know if C is just the right length, right? If C is just the right length, then the Pythagorean theorem works. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Well, look at this first one. If it's an acute triangle, what happens is C is too short. So when I go to do it, I take the A squared plus B squared. The C squared is too small. So the C squared, instead of being equal to A squared plus B squared, it's less than the a squared plus b squared. Then we know it's an acute triangle. If it's an obtuse triangle like this one, right, greater than 90, that means the c is too big. So now the c squared is greater than the a squared plus b squared instead of equaling it. So you can check it that way. Um, the one other thing to be aware of, and I'll show you on this next problem, is it'll ask you this question on your assignment. It will say, Verify the segments with lengths 4.3 feet, 5.2 feet, and 6.1 feet form a triangle. Uh, is the triangle acute, right, or obtuse? Yeah, and that first part is you have to make sure the sides will actually form a triangle. In your notes, you'll see there it says a triangle inequality theorem. That's something that uh, we're actually going to go over more in depth later on, but I'm, we're just going to introduce it for this section. Uh, what it says is if you pick any two sides of your triangle, they should always add up to be more than the third side. If not, then they don't they can't form a triangle. So an example of one that doesn't, if I have uh, for example, one, uh, three, and seven. Well, if I add up two of the sides one and three, that comes out to be four, they don't they add up to be less than seven. That means they can't form a triangle. Just think about why. If I have a segment that's seven, you know, seven units long, and I have one that's one and one that's three, there's no way they could meet up. They could not form a triangle. So the way you're going to check down here says verify that the segments with lengths 4.3, 5.2, and 6.1 feet uh, form a triangle. Take the two shorter sides. So I'm going to take the 4.3 and 5.2 and add them together. So 4.3 plus 5.2, they add up to be what, 9.5? As long as they add up to be more than the third side, then you're good. 
Okay, so again, what I checked is I went 4.3 plus 5.2. They have to add up to be, that to be greater than the third side. As long as they do, we're good, so they can form a triangle. So the next question is, is the triangle acute, right, or obtuse? Well, to do that, we've got to check, we've got to compare the A squared plus B squared to the C squared. If it equals that, it's a right triangle. If the C squared is too small, so it's smaller than the A squared plus B squared, then it's always going to be acute. If the C squared is too long, if the A squared plus B squared is less than the C squared, then it's going to be a, an obtuse triangle. So let's go ahead and check it. You have to be careful. C has to be the longest side. So that's going to be C. Uh, a and B don't really matter. So I'm going to go 4.3 squared plus 5.2 squared, and I want to compare that to 6.1 squared. So grab a calculator, plug those in there. So I'm going to go 4.3 squared plus 5.2 squared. It comes out to be uh, 45.53. Okay, and now let's try 6.1 squared. 6.1 squared comes out to be 37.21. Okay. So this, in this case, the a squared plus b squared was greater than the c squared. So what that means was the c was too small, right? It wasn't long enough. They, if it's a right triangle, they'd be equal, but the c was too small. If the c is too small, that's this one right here. Okay. It has to be acute. So what type, type of triangle? It's an acute triangle. Okay, I want you guys to try one real fast. So let's let's just do this top one, number six. So first of all, verify that they form a triangle. And then I want you to decide if they're acute, right, or obtuse. So pause the video, check that, and then come back. All right, so let's verify if it forms a triangle first. So if I take the two shorter sides, three plus four, that has to be greater than the third side, which is six. And we're good. Right, seven is greater than six. So it checks off. Uh, does it form a triangle? Yes. So we're good there. Okay, the second part, is the triangle acute, right, or obtuse? So this is where we're gonna do the a squared plus b squared, and then compare it to the c squared. So the a squared plus b squared, three squared plus four squared, and then c squared would be six squared, right? It's the longest side, it's gotta be c. So this would be nine plus 16, that's 25. The 6 squared is 36. So in this case, just think about it. The C was too big. Okay. What that means is that when I draw the triangle, it forms a triangle that's greater than 90 degrees. Right? C was too long. It was too big. So in this case, the triangle is obtuse because you have that angle that's greater than 90 degrees. Okay. And that's all there is in that first section. So it's just a review of Pythagorean theorem. Okay. And then we're just adding on this. The second theorem where you're deciding, you can actually check using the Pythagorean theorem if it's an acute or an obtuse triangle. But that should do it.